Well, I don't make a lot of reviews. Um, the reason being, most of the time, there's not very much innovation right now. Um, every 3D printer looks like an Ender 3. Every laser engraver is basically the laser engraver from before, just with more power. And um, I think that's kind of boring. But things are changing. And um, a company called uh, Flying Bear, they approached me and they asked me if I wanted to do a review on their laser engraver. And they sent me the specs. And um, the laser engraver is quite the normal thing. It's got about five watts. Uh, it's uh, the usual format of about 400 by 300 something millimeters. And um, it, it seems quite standard. And I was about to say no, uh, but then I saw that they have a new controller on here, which gives it a lot of autonomy. A lot of autonomy that I'm used from my own um, CO2 laser and that I've come to love. So this thing started checking a lot of I like it boxes and I said, yeah, I would really like to review this. So they got in touch again and they told me they were going to send one over and they gave me tons of information about this thing. And uh, that is very forthcoming and I really like it. So. Uh, this review is already off to a good start um, because quite often when you're doing reviews for the resellers you don't get any information and quite often you get a product that is very much different from what you were thinking that you were getting but this time this is not the case so let's crack this thing open have a look inside and get this thing set up uh, because this could turn out to be really really interesting well, let's get to it. So let's just have a look inside the box. I'm not going to show the entire unboxing, but um, I just want to show this uh, because it comes quite well packed. And uh, it is slightly smaller boxes than some of the other um, engravers that I got. You get the, uh, the, the piece of checkbox information that they check everything is in here and uh, this actually has real tick marks ah this is not just a printed piece of paper that's the same for everybody also and this is very important for me we get a manual and uh, a printed manual with a lot of information and um, how to get this thing running how to set it up how to put it together uh, i like this very much and of course, all of the other stuff. It's well packed, uh, very solid. We do get the laser module. By now, these are also really just a standard piece, uh, but it's it's nicely manufactured, has a good weight to it. Um, you really trust them to have a five watt laser in there when they say it's a five watt laser. Okay, so we are about 45 minutes into the build. I've built the frame. Um, I've attached the x-axis gantry, which comes fully pre-assembled. I've added the cable chain and uh, wow, that is one solid cable chain. I've basically put everything else together and um, the next thing that is going to be added is the controller box and then the exhaust fan setup. But right now, I just wanted to take a second and uh, just, just tell you how good this thing is. So all the parts are metal. Um, there's a perfect balance between simplicity and stability. Uh, whoever designed this thing did a really good job, first of all, at building it and then at reducing the complexity up to the point where it is so easy to put together. And I love it. Uh, this is one of the nicest builds um, in a long time. Um, there's a link to a video in the manual, but you don't really need this. Uh, this is so amazingly simple. Um, all the tools you need are with the device um, 
all the, the cables and the cable shrouds and everything you need is already cut to the perfect length. The only thing that I had to cut right up until now was the belt and I just had to ha cut it in half. Just take half of it, cut it there. It fits perfectly. So I really, really like um, the way this thing uh, gets put together. And if everything continues like this, uh, this is going to be a blast. So here we have the controller box. Um, it says Flying Bear Laser Man. And um, let's look inside. Because why not? And what do we get? We get an MKS LTS board, which is a ESP32 based gerbil like controller board. Uh, we've got a MKS MakerBase uh, color LCD display with touchscreen. It's also nice. We have something that looks like a power distribution board. Hard to say. And uh, we have a little mystery circuit back here. And uh, I'm told that this is a flame detector. Uh, so what it does is it, it's got a sensor looking out um, onto your build platform. And uh, if it detects a high amount of uh, infrared radiation uh, from like something burning, it's gonna signal, it's gonna signal the uh, microcontroller and the microcontroller is going to go into an alarm mode. And um, that's the last component here. That's, uh, that's a buzzer beeper. And I think this thing is gonna be really, really loud if that alarm goes off. Apart from that, uh, there's nothing more. Uh, we do have a Wi-Fi antenna in the back of here, which is um, separated from the case. So um, signal reception and range should be good. We've got a power on off switch, but that's it. Um, nothing more to it. It's nicely simple. It doesn't need a lot of stuff. Uh, all of the connections are on the side here uh, and uh, the cable management is okay. Uh, also, the MKS boards are pretty widely known and accepted to be kind of good uh, as long as they don't break and you have to deal with uh, MKS support, then you're fine. So that's the controller board. And then we have the smoke extractor, which has a high power fan. Um, that is like 10 watts and it's a, uh, a double turbine fan. So it's probably gonna create quite a large amount of uh, airflow. Um, even with, uh, with the uh, constrainment of the filter. And uh, the filter is one of these generic uh, I think it's a 90 millimeter filter. Um, I suppose they're like HIPAA style material and they have um, maybe about uh, 90 to 95 percent particulate filter and um, they're used in other equipment. They don't really get rid of everything uh, but for a start they're not too bad. So maybe just on a side note, uh, this flame detector circuit um, has an adjustment uh, potentiometer. Uh, if you have this thing in a very well lit environment, you may need to uh, set this differently and you may have to reduce the, um, the intensity at which it signals that it thinks there is a fire on the build platform. Um, I think this is a very good idea because uh, laser fires are not too uncommon. And uh, 
I can show you some pictures of of things that I've taken out of lasers um, just to clean them before there was a fire. And um, well, there are there are a lot of stories on YouTube about people who basically lost everything because their 3D printer or fire or, or laser caught fire um, because they didn't maintain them properly and they let him get dusty and they let um, the the burn off from the laser process and, and from everything they, they let it accumulate in there and that stuff burns like hell um, the same is of course true for uh, 3d printer material um, especially uh, those little small things that come off if they pull up inside your printer and they catch fire they burn like hell so I think that this little sensor is a really good thing. Uh, the only thing that I would have been wishing for was an emergency off button. Um, that is something that is still missing on a lot of these um, budget-like uh, lasers. And 25 minutes later, we're done. So uh, basically, after building the frame, all you have to do is um, attach the controller and attach the exhaust fan and the filter. Uh, the only problem that I ran into, and uh, I'll show you in a second, was um, that the smoke extractor um, that touches the laser and uh, the laser shroud um, was a little bit too large and I just had to sand it down. It was about two millimeters, not a big deal not a big deal at all and now it fits perfectly uh, so maybe that is on purpose the rest of the thing is uh, super solid um, and like I said I'm quite amazed the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go out and buy a piece of sacrificial MDF um, that I'm going to mount the uh, engraver on uh, first of all, I have something that I can really put it on and test it on and um, I'm going to attach the laser to the MDF and the second thing that uh, the benefit of that is uh, if you ever um, Laser when you're not supposed to you don't burn any good table. You don't burn anything um, You know all those pictures where you, where they have the laser engraver in the living room and there's a dog and a kid playing right alongside when the father is doing some engraving yeah don't do that um, this is still a quite powerful laser and uh, it can do a lot of damage and the the fumes coming off of of a laser uh, can range between uh, well slightly smelly to poisonous um, and you don't want to put this into a space where other people are and um, Also, you can use a sacrificial plate under here for marking it uh, Just to make sure that you're always uh, Lasering where you want to or you can use it um, To attach something uh, to create a distance between the object that you're lasering and uh, and the laser and the uh, sacrificial plate so you can make sure that your laser is actually going through the material all the way uh, lots of stuff that you can do but um yeah this is the next thing that i'm going to do but first i'm going to show you the part that i have to modify now when you look at the back of the laser uh this here's the laser module this here is the removable shroud um there's this little piece here that looks like part of a vacuum cleaner and what you want to have is you want to have the the removable shroud uh, touch this thing really well so all the fumes produced inside of here are um, exhausted through the the pipe here and into the filter and through the fan and uh, this part here uh, was slightly too long and I just sanded it down it was very very simple very easy to do and now the shroud actually sits absolutely perfectly uh, there's a small piece of felt um, on the shroud and uh, that makes perfect contact with this uh, nozzle so um, 
that was really easy and it took like two or three minutes or so um, because this part here is 3D printed and it sands down really well. You could also use a cutter knife and just get it between two layers and uh, just take a few strands of plastic off. But in my experience, uh, sanding it down is easier and it has a better result. Okay, we have the whole thing set up. Um, I was able to get some sacrificial wood and um, let's go over what was in the box before we turn it on. So we got the engraver um, with everything you see here. Um, there is a set of uh, glasses in here and to be honest, these are probably the best included set of glasses I've ever had. Uh, they're not bad. They're not professional. They, they don't, there's no indication of what they're good for and they don't have any security classification, but they do cover the face good and they are, they have a very strong filter. Um, regarding the wavelength, um, they do match what you get here. This is a light blue laser and uh, these um, do not transmit that wavelength. Um, that is fine. If you take engraving seriously, you should go out and get yourself some good glasses, uh, properly certified glasses. Um, just for testing this out, um, these actually do the job. Uh, so yeah, really good. Uh, also, we get um, a roller setup uh, with uh, two rollers and a stepper and you can use this to engrave cans uh, everything that you can put on that you can rotate um, I personally don't like roller setups that much because um, they do tend to reflect more laser light and uh, they don't really fit the things that I work with um, but it's pretty nice that it's part of the package. So this the, the package actually gives you everything you need. Um, a word of caution, um, if you use the roller and uh, you need to remove one of the stepper wires from the, from the controller board, always do it with the uh, machine switched off. Um, if you pull, a stepper from a stepper controller while it's powered you can damage the stepper controller irreparably um, just like that and uh, that's a lot of wasted money so be careful turn the machine off wait like uh, like a minute and then switch over um, to the other stepper and um, when switching back do the same thing also, what we get is a distancing tool. Uh, so when you engrave something, you put the laser down in, over the distance tool, and that makes sure that your laser is perfectly focused. Um, this is very good, uh, and it's pretty simple. Just don't lose it. Um, with the laser, you get the laser shroud, uh, this thing is really good. It makes sure that you always have an air draft going by the lens of the laser, which makes sure that none of the smoke and, uh, and vapors and dust gets back onto the lens because it would contaminate it and the laser would get bad really quickly. Also, this makes sure that you have an adequate airflow near the lens uh, because especially with higher um, powered lasers, you do have a lot of energy concentrated by the lens and uh, the lens material gets warm. And if it's not a, a perfect glass lens, then it will cloud up over time. And uh, this shroud, which is held on by magnets, and which has a connection to the um, smoke absorber, um, 
make sure that that doesn't happen. So always take good care of this. Also, this limits the reflection of uh, laser light you get from whatever you're engraving. So it's a security, well, it's a safety feature and it's a good thing. So always make sure that you keep this thing um, clean. Uh, make sure that the airflow from the cooler up on the laser is adequate and that the uh, fan is always clean and that it has enough airflow going through the laser or you're going to burn up the laser just like that. Um, these, are, these things are pretty important um, so you get a long laser life. Uh, diode lasers don't have that much of a service life, uh, people say between 500 and 1000 hours, uh, but if they're properly cooled and if you're only using them at low intensity, just as low as it works out, um, then that service life uh, can be extended substantially. Yeah, that's it. I mean, that's what we get. Also, um, there's a lot of information in the online manuals. There's a lot of videos that you can watch. There's there's so much resources. Um, Flying Bear went to quite a lot of extent um, to provide information to the user and uh, kudos for that. Uh, other suppliers just don't do that. So let's power it up and let's see how it works. Okay, so let's turn it on for the first time. Off camera, I've already done the safety checks. Um, when you turn it off or turn it on, the laser does not come on. Um, also, when something goes wrong and it's lasering and you pull the power cord, uh, the laser turns off immediately. This is very good because this thing does not have an emergency off. But on this device, the power cable is readily accessible. You do not have to bend over the machine or anything. You can just take it and yank it out. So uh, I'm gonna let them go on the no emergency off, um, but that's fine. Um, you can actually just yank the power cable out of the machine and it's completely dead. So let's turn it on. The beeper is nice and loud. There's a second beeper for the display, uh, which is not quite as loud. Um, we have a maker burst, maker base firmware on this thing, um, which makes sense because it's one of their boards. And um, I must say, I actually like the interface. There are three modes for this. Um, the first one is basically offline, standalone. Uh, you put in an SD card, you have your programs on your SD card, and it just engraves what is on there. You can make changes to the intensity and speed, and that's perfectly okay, and that is what I'm expecting nowadays. Also, you can connect, connect this via USB, and you can use tools like Laser Gerbil or Lightburn, and uh, apparently it's supported by Lightburn. Um, I'm gonna try this out. And there is a Wi-Fi mode where you basically have the user interface and some of the configuration interfaces on a web interface. I am having problems connecting this to Wi-Fi right now, so we'll see how far I get. There are also two engraving modes, and I'm just going to show them off right now. If I engrave something, and I've taken the SD card that came with the engraver and I've uh, put it inside. And we have a logo.nc file, so it's a G-code file. And if I select that, it asks me if I want to use auto mode or manual mode. And that is another thing that I like very much. If I have something where I just have one repetitive action each and every time, I usually want to have my um, my engraving at a home point, a zero point. 
And this engraver has end switches, so it can actually go to the zero point and it can just engrave from there. And that is really, really nice. Also, you have a manual mode where you can first position your laser and uh, you have to actually press the button each and every time, which is a little bit annoying, uh, but yeah, that's okay. You can't just hold it and it keeps moving, but you can set it between um, 10 millimeters and 0 0.1 millimeter, so also that's perfectly fine. You can turn the motors on and off. If you have the motors off, you can still move the carriage by hand, fine. Then you lock and it's locked again. You can't move it, so very nice. Um, you can have a pilot light, which is like the laser running at one to two percent, uh, which makes it able, which makes it easy for you uh, to position the laser. And once you're done with that, you say engrave now. Also, you have the possibility to let the laser show you the frame of whatever you want to engrave, and it will just go once around the outline of uh, whatever that figure is. And uh, it's also very, very useful. And that's something that, uh, that comes with every professional laser, uh, like the CO2 lasers and everything. If you have a good controller on there, these are the functions that you get too. In automatic mode, this will just go back to zero. It will ask you, is it okay? Should I start? Should I show you the frame? And if you say go, it will just start going. Um, to make this easier, I actually put a zero stop on here. That's kind of hard to see right now. Um, so if I have some wood, I can just put it in there and this here is the zero position. This is where the laser uh, will come to rest. And that makes it really easy. And I have some three millimeter uh, birch plywood and I'm just going to slot this in to the zero position. Okay, that's it. And I'm gonna select auto mode, the laser zeros. It asks me if I want to see the frame. So if I want to see the frame, it will go around the outline. And if I'm happy with this, I can move to the next step and it will ask me how many times I want to engrave. Uh, usually if you have something where you want to cut through, you might select um, more times or you, if you have um, a material that is very hard to laze, then um, you can go more than once. Um, but once you're done, uh, you can now just Go put on your laser safety glasses and start. Now it turned on the fan, uh, which is going to suck all of the uh, soot and all of the leftovers from the engraving and uh, all the smoke and everything. And uh, it still allows me to reduce the laser power, reduce the speed or reduce the amount of air going through the filter. So I would say I don't need 100% uh, laser power. So let's reduce that to something like 60 so we can extend the life of the laser diode. And I'm going to keep the speed at 100%. And now I'm gonna just let it run. Now, the fan and the filter that is um, on here, it basically takes away all of the smoke and all of the soot, but it doesn't take care of the smell. So um, if you're lazing something that is uh, producing potentially harmful gases, um, 
you will still need a smoke extractor uh, and you may need um, more than just this simple filter um, but regarding smoke it's doing a fantastic job so there's absolutely no smoke here um, there's also um, there's a noticeable smell of burning wood uh, but that's it and I quite like that Okay, so this has been running for a while now, um, and I must say, I'm impressed. I really am. I mean, this was at 60%. Given that it's a 5 watt laser, that is perfectly fine. Um, the, the engraving is... Uh, not too deep um, but it's you can really feel it and you can actually see that the laser dot is so small that you can even you can kind of make it make out the spaces in between uh, this looks well, this looks extremely good to be tr to be honest um, the first the first spots where it was at 100% are way overcharred, uh, but the reproduction of the image is really good, really, really good. Also when I came back uh, there was absolutely no smoke in the room. Um, I have studio lights on and stuff and, and you would see smoke right away, but there's none. So the filter is working. Um, it does smell like burning wood, um, but I didn't expect the HEPA filter to take care of that. You would need uh, active carbon or something like this. Uh, but this is perfectly adequate. Uh, also, the, the shroud uh, is already thick enough that it takes away most of the reflection from the laser. So. Oh, and you can actually see how much soot is in there. Um, wow. So the smoke extraction works really good too. I like that. So what I was trying to say was um, that the reflection that you get from the surface caused by the laser um, is already um, dampened enough by the shroud. Um, it's still recommended to wear uh, laser goggles, um, but uh, this also works pretty good. I, I quite like it. This is uh, this is really surprisingly good. It really is. So I want to give you a small um, example of how I'm working with uh, laser burn. And I have this uh, little thing set up that I want to engrave and cut into a piece of wood. And everything is set up in laser burn. And now, as you can see, I've got my origin right in the middle of this. Um, you can set it to where you want, but right now I want to use uh, the middle position and I want to cut this. The integration is absolutely perfect for for light burn. So if I move my laser now um, and I can do that using the keypad on the laser, I can just move this into the right position. Just somewhere where it will work out. Then I take my my height gauge, I put this on here. Oh, whoops, that was a little bit too much, okay. I'll open the screw and just let this sit down. 
right on the gauge and well this is one of the only things that I'm not loving about the engraver and that's that the screw doesn't really set very well but we can now remove this and everything is set up and the only thing that I have to do in Lightburn now is I click either show me the frame or start lasering from that position that I'm in and it's going to use that position because I have it set up to use the current position and this is absolutely super. The second thing that works and a lot of my other cheap lasers don't do that. Uh, once it's homed, um, the setting of origins or memorized position in laser burn works perfectly. So it is so easy to use. If I click start now and get my laser goggles first, it should just do what I want. So the laser was paused. I don't think so. But we can reconnect. And even now it should still be set up correctly. I can just click start because I'm using current position. We can ignore the out of bounds because we know that we're in the right position. And it just starts working and it's so easy uh, what you can hear is that um, I've hooked up the exhaust fan to the uh, laser output so each and every time the laser is used for cutting um, that's when the fan ramps up really high and I thought that was a pretty good change to the machine and it was it was kind of necessary because uh, turning the laser on in light burn doesn't turn the fan on. I think that's a software bug and they're gonna have to fix it someday. And the second thing that you can see right now probably is that when you're doing cutting you're still having a lot of smoke that does not get caught by the uh, by the fan or by the by the vacuum um, That is something that I don't really like but there's no way around this with these machines um, The fact that that the small uh, Vacuum is there in any way just makes it work so much better So we're done We can now move the laser away And we've got our part perfectly lased and cut. And I mean, that is just super. I really like that. Just to get to a conclusion, I think this is one of the best lasers out there right now. Uh, regarding integration and regarding ease of use because uh, you can use it like you can use a professional co2 laser it's not as powerful it's not as fast it's also maybe a little bit more dangerous because it's not all covered up but then again it does everything you want i mean i've had it for over a week i've done a lot of engraving and the results are just absolutely wonderful i've done cutting and engraving i've i've cut out whoops i've cut out some of the things that i make pretty often um i've tried a lot of stuff and the wonderful thing is it just works it, it works together with the tooling it works together with light burn it works pretty good with a laser gerbil the only thing that i wished they would have done is to have uh, the exhaust fan turn on automatically but like i said that is probably a software bug and it's going to be fixed in the future and the other thing is um, i would have liked to have a little bit 
better um, smoke extraction. Apart from that, for me, this thing is perfect um, because it can do everything that I need. It's not super fast, but then again, I'm not doing it for money, so uh, it's just a perfect thing for a hobbyist. And uh, the construction is very solid. Everything just fell into place. Um, everything was easy to do. And if you look at the resources that you get from Flying Bear, uh, it's just amazing. You really get everything. And they've actually made sure that all the software packages that are out there, um, that they're supporting it. And uh, yeah, kudos to that. Um, this is probably the best machine that I've reviewed so far that was not a professional style uh, CO2 laser. It is really, really good and I really recommend it. Um, it's quite nice. So that was my review. I hope it wasn't too long. Um, I hope you like it. Uh, Flying Bear gave me some discount codes and um, a lot of resources and I'm just going to put them all in the description of the video so you have them and um, like I said if you have this thing if you get this thing you're gonna have a lot of fun um, the laser is not rated to be very powerful but it delivers every last bit of it it's just a really nice machine so thank you very much for watching and bye bye
no memory card. Why no memory card when you're clearly recording? Oh, Panasonic. <laughs> it seems to work anyway. <laughs>